We're here at Mawson Lakes in lovely Adelaide with R.I. Oz, and today I'm going to get to drive this, Trev the electric car. Now, Trev was built by a very talented team at the University of South Australia, led by this extremely talented man, Peter Pudney. So, Peter, can you tell me what the original sort of motivation was for, for building this? Yeah, we used to build solar racing cars that race from Darwin to Adelaide across right. Australia. Yeah. And uh, we figured if we could drive from Darwin to Adelaide without using petrol, we should be able to get to work and back without using petrol. Right. So, uh, we wanted a car that we could use all the time for just driving around town uh, that didn't use fossil fuels. Right. And that was, so, that, so it was a, originally a university-based uh, development and engineering project. Yeah, that's right. And we, we, uh, we hired an industrial designer to take our industrial design students to develop the concept. And then our mechanical engineering, electrical engineering students actually uh, did all the detailed design and built the car. So it was, it was absolutely designed and built within the university? Yeah, by students. Right, yep. brilliant. And so, I mean, tell, just go through a few of the things, because I've driven a few electric cars. I've never driven one like this. <laughs> it's slightly different. So, I mean, in terms of batteries and, and range and all those things, so, I mean, what, what are the batteries that you've used yeah, in here? So it's a lithium-ion polymer battery. Right. Uh, when, when we first built the car, we wanted a range of about 100 kilometres, so we had about 40 kilograms of lithium-ion polymer. Right. We've then upgraded to about 80 kilograms, and it's now got a range of over 200 kilometres. Wow, that's yeah. really good. Wow, that's yep. fantastic. But well, that's, a, that's a, a, a very healthy range. I mean, there's quite a lot of commercially available electric vehicles that haven't got that kind of range. Yeah, and, and the secret is it's 300 kilograms right. all up for the car, right. so it, it doesn't take a lot of energy to yeah. push it along the road. Yeah, because, I mean, commercial electric vehicles are often quite heavy. I mean, they're yeah, way, 1,500 way, kilograms. Right, so, yeah. yeah, way, way heavier. That's incredible that you managed to keep it that light, but with that range is really impressive. Yep. And what sort of speeds does it, you know, I mean, is it, is it road legal, it can it's, go on the roads? It's and road legal, it will drive at normal road speeds, so right. top speed is over 100 kilometres now. Right, right. So Peter, I'm intrigued by the design, because it's, uh, I, think it's, I think it's fair to say unusual, not what people are used to with cars. Uh, yeah. Three wheels, and then passengers, the passengers sitting behind the driver. I mean, can you explain why those decisions were made? There, there were two reasons for that, really. First is, we knew that it had to be lightweight, uh, and it had to be aerodynamic, so... Having the, uh, the drive, uh, having the passenger behind the driver means that we can get good aerodynamics. Um, three wheels, if you've got two wheels, it'll fall over. If you've got four, you've got more weight and more complexity than you need. Um, the other reason we did it like this is because we wanted something that didn't look like a normal car. Um, right. So it's, it's designed it's specifically for commuting. Right. We don't want people to accidentally you know, hook a caravan up to it and drive yeah. it across Australia. So right. that's, that's not what it's for. <laughs> And, does, and so having one person behind the other basically means that the, the, the bit that's pushing into the wind is reduced. You, you, can, can, keep you can keep that narrower, keep it narrow, yeah. right. and it also uh, it gives the driver a, a really good view of the road. There's no A-pillars, yeah. um, uh, yeah. and most of the time, uh, most people driving in, in Australia have just one person in the car. Yes. Uh, they're going to work and back, so yeah. we don't often use the back seat, but it's there in case you need right. it. Right, right. And what about the motors? What, it's got one It's one got one motor. motor. It's, it's, it's actually at the moment got a motor off an electric scooter. So the whole rear swing arm has got the, uh, the motor, the reduction gear and the wheel all in right. one unit. And so it's the rear wheel that it's drives it? It's the rear it. wheel that drives right. it, yeah. And, I mean, and what else have you done with it? So since you built it, you presumably haven't just driven it around the, the campus. We, we've done very little driving around the campus. <laughs> we, uh, 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 the students that built it actually took it to Darwin and drove it from Darwin to Adelaide in wow. the uh, demonstration class in the World Solar Challenge. Once we'd done that, I got a phone call from someone saying, is it any good for long trips? And they showed me a map of the world. Could we drive it around the world? Right. Before I thought about it, I said, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> so we did. We, uh, wow. we drove it from Geneva, headed east, and basically kept driving until we got back to Geneva. Wow. So, so this car's been around the world? It has. It's, it's wow. about 28,000 kilometres around the wow. world. Yeah. And that, I mean, I'm just intrigued by, you know, there's some longer trips I've done in the UK where I've got to plug in. Yeah, you have to pl so presumably you had to plan the journey in advance to well, find the, out places you could stop. The, the trip was planned, and uh, we would generally drive for uh, you know 200 kilometres or so in the morning, plug in, charge up while we're having lunch, long lunch, and then yeah. uh, in the afternoon drive again. Do another right, yeah. right. Wow, and you got right around the world. That's yeah. amazing. But was that just this team, or were there other no, people there involved? No, there that? were there were three teams that uh, did the round the world trip. Right. Right. Yeah. So you had backup support and... Uh, we had a little like bit of that. backup support. There was, there was one support van for the three teams. Right. Oh, that's all right. Oh, we, that's we didn't, not too bad. Yeah, yeah. We, we were fairly self-sufficient during right. the journey. That's fantastic. And what year, when, when did you finish that then? That, that was uh, 2010 we started and we finished in February 2011. Right, right. What other projects have, have you been working on? Well, since on? then we've, uh, we've just been, we have been doing what it was designed for and just driving it around the city. Right. Um, and we, we're currently working on a project with a, uh, an NGO based in Zimbabwe. 
uh, they contacted me and said, could we build them a solar car for transporting patients to a hospital? Right. Uh, because at the moment, they, you know, pregnant women in particular, have to walk more than 10 kilometres to, right, to, to get to a hospital. hospital. Right. So uh, my initial thoughts were, there's no way you'd do that. It's, mm. it's just ludicrous. You just use a petrol car or yeah. something off the shelf. But um, they really don't have any energy, so we're right. looking at designing them something that can be solar powered. And when you say solar powered, does that, because I think a lot of people who don't know a lot about electric vehicles go, why can't you just put solar panels on the roof of the car and use that? Yeah. Well, uh, and it's quite easy to explain. It would have to be a very big car. <laughs> it would have to be an enormous <laughs> car. Yeah. So the, the solar racing cars that drive from Darwin to Adelaide have got six square metres yes. of the most expensive panels yeah. you can possibly buy. You know, they spend millions of dollars on their solar right. panels to drive a, a very small, lightweight vehicle. Yeah. So with one person lying with, down in it. Exactly. Sort of yeah. yeah. So for a practical vehicle, you need more energy than you can get from. Right. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so in Africa, for instance, there would be solar panels that would charge the car. Is that the plan? That, well, we, we would have some solar panels that would charge up batteries and then we'd have yeah. battery packs that you can switch in and out ah, of the car. Right, I see. We maybe have uh, some solar on the car as well. Yeah, but, the, but, so, but essentially you've got a transportation system that is not reliant on fuel from anywhere else. Because there isn't there. fuel from anywhere right. else. It's the only fuel they've got. Yeah. So, yeah. And so we have to use very little energy. Right, to, uh, so that, that's again going to be a lightweight vehicle that can transport one, one pregnant woman and a driver, presumably. Is that the, is that the idea? And, and the pregnant woman's friend right. and a pot and some chickens. Right. So, uh, yes. <laughs> So it has, to be, it has to be able to ca carry all that. It has to be able to carry right. all the supplies. That and is that, the you haven't constructed that yet, but that's a, pla that's we, a plan. That's got, in once again, we've started, we've got some industrial designers who are working on the industrial design. We've got the, the team that drove Trevor around the world is working on it, and right. we're going to build something this year. But that's really good that there's people with actual direct hands-on experience of one, building the vehicle, but two, keeping it going in, you know, there's going to be, there was a big per areas you went through around the world that were fairly challenging yes well yes to yeah. say the least that, that's right and you know with an experimental car it wasn't the most reliable car but yeah. it, we we're, we're able to keep it moving right and, uh, so you've got that advantage to build on to make something that's fairly solid reliable simple and presumably also which i think is important that people don't understand very simple to maintain it, it has to be well first it had to be very simple to build because yeah. it was built by a bunch of students yeah. uh, and secondly it had to be yeah very reliable yeah because um you know we're not very good at building cars, but we're also not very good at fixing cars, yeah, so yeah. it has to be simple. Yeah. Well, I'd love to have a go in it if I'm allowed. Well, certainly. <laughs> You're comfy in the back. It's oh, beautiful back here. Fantastic. <coughs> oh, oh, it's a, oh, it's comfy. Very secure door. So should we shut shut the lid? You can do that. You can do that. Oh. That is an interesting engine noise. Wow, this is, I love the sound of it. It's actually got, a, it's got something of the train about it, in a way, isn't it? It all reverberates through the body. Yeah. How warm is it in the back? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Very mild. Very mild. Quite a relief. It is brilliant. What a brilliant car! It does. It is quite noisy, and but not. But the faster you go, the less noisy it is. It's the initial pull away is quite. But it's a cool noise. I like it. It's got. A, it's got a. It's a mixture of suburban train and Stuka dive bomber. 
which I think is really, really good mixture of sounds. <laughs> and the indicators, I got a bit wrong. Oh, well, I've still got an indicator on. That's it. But it's really good. No, I love it. It's, it's, and it's very easy to drive. Once you get used to it, the, the, the kind of space of where you are, you can't t quite tell how wide it is. And you think it's wider than it really is, but actually it's very narrow. So, it's, no, it's brilliant. And I was very cool and comfortable in the front. What was it like as a passenger, Peter? It was uh, just very relaxing back here. I only made one or two minor driver errors. <laughs> well, Peter, I mean, that was genuinely a, a real thrill for me. That was a fantastic thing to drive. I mean, I can see that, you know, obviously if you, if you had the time and you were finessing it as a commercial vehicle, you can make it quieter and blah, blah, blah. But actually, you get in and out really easily. It goes along. It, I broke the speed limit, as we know. <laughs> Uh, but not by much, but it just flies along. I mean, that was, that was the biggest surprise. Yeah. I so, somehow thought, oh, well, this is a kind of experimental university-built vehicle. It probably does 30 miles an hour, which is, well, you know. No, this thing, that, thing, that thing will go. Uh, the indicators confused the hell out of me. I didn't know what was going on with that. But, I mean, it was such a joy to drive, really easy to drive, really, once you get used to it. Really clever, really clever. And, I mean, the fact that it's gone around the world is a testament that it, it actually does work and yeah. it is a functioning... And, I mean, also that this technology works. You know, the, 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 and the, all the arguments you hear against it are going, well, yeah, I know all that, but you can drive but, around but the world. I still use it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, no, brilliant. Thanks so much indeed. You're welcome. Well, that was a really cool experience. Thanks to UniSA and RI Oz for making it happen. And if you want to find out more about Trev and the electric transport projects in Africa, check out teamtrev.com. And if you want a bit more science with a twist, check out rioz.org.au. Well, that's all from me, Robert Llewellyn, and as you like to say over here in Australia, good day.